Right then, hello there, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good whatever it is, wherever you happen to be. My name is Paul, I'm also called Nick Knack. I write the daily teaser quizzes, I'll try and put them up there if possible. I write, I talk about TV shows I've been watching, I've been watching Good Omens just recently and I'll try and throw in a link to that as well. And I also, very occasionally, watch movies, as of when I get a chance. And I have to admit that I've watched one that I had time to see, but didn't get a chance to review until now, or at least until yesterday, which is when I started doing the written version of this video. I basically found myself having a lack of time to do the associated review. Paperwork, job hunting, nephew sitting, writing quizzes, doing TV reviews, what have you. Time is a resource that I never managed to manage, and one that I find slips through my fingers faster than I can catch it. That's always the way, I think. And it's the same, I also believe, is true for most of us. Keeping hold of time is a tricky thing to do. At any rate, a couple of months ago, in early August of this year, I saw a film, I didn't review it. I'm correcting that today with this video, and it's written equivalent on my blog, Neck Knacks Old Peculiar. And I think 1984's Threads, is possibly the most powerful drama I've ever seen. Directed by Mike Mick Jackson and written by Matt Barry Hines, first aired on BBC Two and set in what would have been then the modern day, Threads opens with a shot of a spider spinning a web and has an introductory narration from journalist Paul Vaughan, reminding us that normal life depends on a web of people all interconnected and all depending on each other's skills. The camera shifts to a long shot of Sheffield on the 5th of March. With the sounds of jets flying overhead uh, and over a car occupied by Jimmy and Ruth, Ruth Jin Dinsdale and Karen Meager, a young couple with their entire life ahead of them, trying to work out whether life in the country would be better than life in town. A month later, May the 5th, we shift again to a news piece playing on the TV, showing a female newsreader, played by Leslie Judd, that tells of increasing Soviet manoeuvres in Iran. The TV is in the local pub and shows us that the news is being seriously ignored by Ruth and Jimmy, as Ruth tells her long-suffering boyfriend her news. She's expecting his child, and it's not exactly the end of the world. Three days later, and whilst worsening news of the international situation plays in the background, 8th of May sees Jimmy having dinner with his family, defiantly telling his mother and father that he and Ruth are going to get married and bring up their children in a home of their own. With Jimmy's father reminding Jimmy that now's not a good time to get married, as there's a recession on. The scene shifts, once again, to an intertitle telling us that Sheffield is the fourth largest city in the UK and that the nearest military targets are a NATO airbase and an RAF communication centre. It then tells us that the date is Thursday 11th of May and that Ruth's family are due to meet Jimmy's, whilst the news, happily burbling away in the background, tells of the worsening situation in Iran and that a US submarine has vanished while on patrol in the area. Things very slowly, very steadily, seem to be getting Worse. Now, what did I make of Threads, of a film that some argue, there's even essays about it on BBC Culture, but that some would argue is the scariest thing ever made? What did I make of it? What do I know about it? There are possibly several things to unpack here, quite a lot of things to unpack. You'll notice for a start that I refer to Threads as a film when it originally aired as a two-hour special drama on BBC Two, on TV in other words. I'm not sure if drawing comparison with Nigel Neal's The Year of the Sex Olympic is, is a good idea, but it, like Threads, was a feature-length drama designed for TV, a, a play for today, if you will. But it's also both are also something that could so easily, given their length, have been released directly to cinemas, in much the way these days that Netflix movies are released to various cinema chains in order for them to count as film for purposes of the award system. 
were threads to be made today, I suspect it would be made by BBC Films and released to cinemas. So while I'm very aware that Threads is a TV show that aired on BBC Two, I can't help but think of it as a film. It's a long-form drama. I know something, thanks to the documentaries that came with my Blu-ray copy of Threads, I know a little about the production side of things. A couple of things stick in my mind. For one thing, Threads director Mick Jackson, who later went on to direct The Bodyguard, had made a documentary for a BBC series called QED, a doc documentary called A Guide to Armageddon that explained what would happen to the UK if a one megaton nuclear bomb very specifically exploded over St Paul's Cathedral in London. Turns out Hornchurch, which is only a few miles from where I live in Brentwood, would be destroyed by the firestorm. Um, it's a very unnerving half hour with very calm, very unhysterical, very unfussy narration from the journalist Ludovic Ken Kennedy. Um, it's on YouTube, I should add, if you go and look for it. I suggest you see it. It's quite a piece, actually. But at any rate, directing A Guide to Armageddon meant that Jackson did lots of research into the effects of a nuclear explosion, and it's something that he and writer Barry Hines were able to use for threads. Hines himself had a reputation for writing socially very realistic work. His script for Kez, which provided the backbone for what some call the best British movie ever made, is quite something to read, and it's quite something to watch, I'm told. I've never seen it. Christopher Eccleston does speak highly of it, though. At any rate, that's one thing. I know about the sets and the locations for Threads as well, or at least a little better about it, if I've understood those documentaries again correctly. The producers got permission from Sheffield Council to use an area around Hillsborough Station Stadium as a location, an area that was due to be demolished. They got permission to use it before and after it was demolished, and I believe some of the footage for the explosion, the actual explosion itself, is of those buildings being knocked down. Don't quote me though. But they got permission to use that location before and after demolition, and got assorted scrapped cars, petroleum gels, faked corpses, and model dead cats to increase the realism of what they were showing us. The end result, especially of that particular set of scenes, was that the explosion and its after effects and the nuclear winter that follow it were as realistic and as accurate as possible. There is possibly a lot more I could tell you there, but I should maybe shift focus a little to my memories of the 80s and how I feel or felt about threads. I can still remember the early 80s, up to 1984, and I can remember that there was a certain amount, a large amount, I should maybe say, about a possible nuclear war. CND were having something of a resurgence in the 80s. And on top of that, the Petrov incident, where the Soviet Union almost attacked the USA as a result of equipment failure, their, their monitoring equipment having a spasm, um, and that was stopped by a Soviet officer on duty double-checking the kit before passing the news up the chain of command, took place in 1983. That and other similar incidents were frequent enough. There was talk, from what I recall, about a nuclear war almost being started by a flock of geese, to give you an example. So that sort of thing, plus other incidents, were frequent. The war almost got started by complete bloody accident. So add incidents like that to the political protests and demos organised by the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, the CND, and by the women of Greenham Common, I have to admit I knew it was there, but I was fair enough oblivious to it. It went over my head. I saw it go past on the news, but was mostly eh, bah, 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 bah. totally oblivious. I, spent, I was in my early teens, as I recall, and remember thinking people would be mad, obviously, to start a nuclear war, especially as people knew about the damage done at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I knew what was happening, oblivious or not, and unconcerned or not. I knew what was happening. I knew there was a threat of a very messy 
dangerous, lethal kind of war, however small I felt it was. But I was more aware, not of the threat of war, but of the protests and the media attention that the idea of a nuclear war was getting. So I knew stuff was happening, and I knew threads, and its US equivalent the day after was around, even though I missed both. And I knew about When the Wind Blows, the Roman Biggs cartoon. My only real contribution was buying a copy of Frankie Goes to Hollywood's uh, Two Tribes. I absolutely fell in love with that song, and it seemed topical. It seemed to pick things up at the time. It is still, years later, a very good tune, but the fact it was picking up on the feel of the time, the possibility of a destructive war, went over my head as much as anything else. So that obliviousness was what got me thinking I should see threads to catch up on something worthy and important that I'd missed at the time. That's why I watched Threads back in August and ended up coming away seriously, seriously, seriously unnerved. Yes, by the story, by the destruction this film shows, but also in part by the little things that caught my eye, or caught my ear, I should say. Two familiar voices caught my attention. One of the newsreaders featured in Fred's was, was played by TV presenter Leslie Judd. Now, I, like many others, would have known her from the kids' magazine show Blue Peter, hearing a voice telling us about nuclear explosions in the Middle East that usually told us how to build our own version of Tracy Island and how to make Dalek cakes was strangely unnerving and riveting to watch. Another voice was that of the actor, or late actor, Ed Bishop, Ed Straker from UFO, as the US president offering grim news and opinions about the situation uh, instead of warning about UFOs flying overhead. It was those little things that added to the unnerving feel of threads. There's another voice as well. Those of us of a certain age will only recognise the voice of Patrick Allen from his one appearance in Blackadder, from the various adverts for Barrett Holmes that he did, flying around in a helicopter, and will also possibly know his narration of the government's Protect and Survive information films. It was a series of public information films in the 70s about how to survive a nuclear attack, how you're supposed to take your door off uh, and hide under the stairs, or take your door off and hide under the door covered in mattresses and blankets. But I suspect most people my sort of age will know him through the re-recorded version of those announcements, the ones he did for Frankie Goes to Hollywood's Two Tribes. Now those original Protect and Survive clips, or a few short clips from the films, were played in threads as various members of the families built their shelters. They're very improvised and, as it turns out, ineffective shelters. Hearing his very authoritative tones telling us how to build shelters, how to tag dead bodies, and what the fallout warnings are going to sound like. Totally bereft of that ZTT baseline for two tribes. Hearing something I regarded as a fairly innocent, mildly satirical dance team being used in its original form and in a situation where it would have been heard is not so much unnerving, but downright bloody scary. <laughs> There is quite possibly a lot more I could add. Much, much more. One thing that did catch my eye in Threads was that at, at about the 49 minute mark, as the bomb drops and the panic starts, one woman, played by the uncredited Anne Sellers, wets herself, pisses herself, urinates herself, wets herself. Quite literally, you see her panicking, and then the next shot is of a leg with urine running down it onto the floor. It is something I know people will do when they're having anxiety or panic attacks. It is something I know people will do when they die. It is something I know people will do in extreme, extreme fear. But it's also something I think I've only ever seen depicted 
in terms of a, a very subtle wet patch in just one horror film. And I couldn't even tell you now, looking back, what that film was. It's just something I've only ever seen done once in one other film. Of everything that told me Threads was not pulling its punches, it was that. There are many things that, in this film that are notable. The realism of it, the accurate depiction of normal life, the way the bomb explosions were done. Hell, the ending where the main character's daughter sees her own new newborn child with the camera freezing on her, her face in a look of despair that's almost a scream. Those are among the things that tell us Threads is a film that will stay with me for a long time, but that shot of that woman wetting herself, those few, few seconds, that is going to stay with me. There are more things I could possibly add, quite a few more things I could possibly add, but I think or suspect that I've said enough already about this film. I can only close with a few last words and a few questions. First things first, let's get the business end. If you like what you see of this review, this is the completely irrelevant bit considering the film we're talking about here, but if you like what you see of this review, please share it. Please hit my YouTube channel's subscription button, the big red subscribe button, and please hit the notification bell if you want to hear about my quizzes and my other film and TV reviews. But let's get to the serious stuff about Threads. Should I urge people to watch Threads? Should I urge you to watch Threads? I would say yes to both, with a few conditions, a few qualifications. I think politicians need to watch Threads. Yes, I still even now think the world is in more danger from climate change. I think everybody needs to do their little bit there, whether it's taking a bus to work instead of driving a car, whether it's recycling, whatever it is we're doing to help damage or avoid damage to the climate is something we should do. I, like you, have seen the amount of wildfires we've had over the past few years, five years or so. It's been getting worse over the past few years. So I need us, we and our leaders need to work on reducing that damage and reversing what's been done. But yes, I still also feel the nuclear war is a threat. And I think politicians should see threads so that they know what will happen to their constituents, us, if they launch an attack. Politicians need to see this film. Should you see threads? Yes, again, and that's a qualified yes, you should see it. Threads is a very well made film, a very well made drama. It is powerful, truthful, and accurate, and a warning about what happens if someone drops one of those nuclear weapons on people like you and me. Threads is well made, but is not an easy film to watch. I, it is something I found deeply, deeply distressing. And given that, I actually chewed over Threads with a few people on and offline. And I found that it was, genuinely speaking, a view that was confirmed. Most of us have, who've seen it have found it extremely watchable, but also deeply disturbing at the same time. And those who were most deeply affected, those who were most deeply disturbed and distressed, who were those watching Threads whilst pregnant. That is unsurprising given the ending of the piece. It's a watchable film that I will recommend till the end of my days that you see, but I urge you to give deep thought to doing so, especially if right now you are pregnant or have mental health issues of some description. Threads is a great film to watch with a very good warning 
to it, but it's not an easy film to see, and it's going to be one that those of us in the best of mental health will find disturbing. I gave it four stars on my review. Please watch it. Please be careful. Right, just as a last word, thank you very much for watching. I hope this review is something that makes you want to watch the film. I hope this means that you'd like to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Like I say, I usually do fun quizzes that are a lot less serious than this review. I also talk about TV shows and other movies I've seen. Please subscribe, come back to me next time, and whatever else you do, stay safe. Here is the all clear warning.